Hey guys, welcome back. So we're going to talk about one of the hottest biomarkers when it comes to longevity and healthy aging known as glycation. I know you're familiar with the hemoglobin A1C test, but actually new research shows that that's not the only protein in the body that is glycosylated or glycated by sugars. There's this whole glycome and this association with impaired glycation links with accelerated aging and premature diseases. Today, we're going to talk more about that. I've been following this, this research for a little bit, and I just want to share this with you. It's super, super fascinating, and I think it provides even more evidence for people to consider therapeutic lifestyle change, cutting out the processed sugars in the diet, eating more healthy, whole, real foods, compressing their feeding window, fasting more, not over-consuming energy and exercise. And we know that the hemoglobin A1C test is just one of many markers of glycation and that the glycation signatures change cell function and this is actually linked with all sorts of diseases. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about this. I think it's just so fascinating. So here's one paper that I wanna share with you out of many we're gonna talk about today, titled Glycosylation Biomarkers Associated with Age-Related Diseases and Current Methods for Glycan Analysis. So what is this process known as glycation? Well, it's when carbohydrates or sugars attach themselves to proteins that compromise the function of these proteins. It's not just on your hemoglobin that we test in the hemoglobin A1C levels to look at your average blood glucose, it also happens to your immunoglobin antibodies. And we can actually test for this. There's different companies now that are looking at this in the longevity space. And I think this is going to become so fascinating in the next five or 10 years as these products become commercially available. So we know that protein glycosylation, which is synonymous with glycation. So these are synonymous terms is the biochemical process for which carbohydrate molecules are covalently bonded or attached to a protein functional group. In biology, glycosylation mainly refers to the enzymatic process that binds glycans to these proteins, affecting intracellular processes like folding, transport, playing important roles in many cellular signaling and communication events. And so here is what's really interesting. You can now look at your immunoglobulin G, IgG levels for glycation, and that signature is linked with accelerated aging, diabetes, uh, autoimmunity, increased risk for all sorts of infectious diseases as well. And so I think this is really important that we're actually able to look at this through a finer comb. And so this was an interesting study titled IgG and glycan signatures as potential diagnostic and prognostic biomarkers. And so I don't know what tests are actually looking at this at this point, but what this study found is there was a signature of impaired glycation that was linked with obesity and diabetes and more worsened immune inflammatory processes. And I think this is what is so important when it comes to metabolic health is trying to keep and prevent these glycemic variability events and, and glycemic variation. Because we know that if your blood sugar levels swing to a very high level, that just renders your various proteins, whether it's immunoglobin antibodies or your hemoglobin particles uh, and your red blood cells, uh, the nerves in your retina and peripheral nerves and so forth, when they become glycated, they become damaged. And that initiates this process of chronic inflammation that is linked with all of these obesity associated diseases like type two diabetes, heart disease, and much more. So I want to thank our friends over at biocoach.io for sponsoring this video. We're going to continue on and talk about several studies that have looked at dietary changes and intermittent fasting strategies as tools to improve your glycation signatures. But as you know, they are the makers of this very convenient and easy to use at home hemoglobin A1C test. There's three different tests in here, friends, that you can use. So you can check out to see where your average blood glucose is, make some exercise, some carbohydrate intake changes, some calorie restrictions, some fasting window changes, and test 90 days later, about, you could do 60 days later, the average half-life of your red blood cells is about 54 days or something to that effect. So you wouldn't want to test in the month. You might want to wait a little bit, but there's three different tests in here. So you can test over the course of the next six months to see how your lifestyle change and your exercise and diet changes are impacting your body's level of glycation. Really important, a lot of people are running around with metabolic disease and don't know it. I don't want you to be one of those people. You need to test, not guess. So check out biocoach.io. I'll put links below with the coupon code we can save on this at-home hemoglobin A1C test. Again, there's three different tests in here, which is phenomenal. So let's continue on and talk about how impaired glycation and these signatures actually accelerate and are linked with disease states. So we know diseases are also driven by many factors, including genetic variants, epigenetic dysregulation, environmental issues, and so forth. But glycosylation, among other post-translational modifications, can reflect the real-time status of these complex interactions and can provide potential diagnostic and prognostic biomarkers for these complex multifactorial diseases like obesity 
like diabetes, like autoimmunity, like depression, like Alzheimer's. So really important because we know that these these signatures of aging have been considered uh, for years, but now we have the tools. And I think this provides a much more important analysis uh, into this. Okay, so what is the link with glycation and aging? I think this is really important. A lot of us, you know, we get into our 40s, get into 50s, 60s, and beyond, and we just want to feel better. We want to look better. And that's why I think it's important to take this seriously because we know that actually glycation can accelerate cellular aging. And that can lead to things like obvious wrinkles, graying of the hair, loss of hair, but even more serious problems like the development of cancer, such as colon cancer as well as pancreatic cancer have been characterized by imbalances in these glycation signatures, as well as different autoimmune disease states like multiple sclerosis, as well as rheumatoid arthritis. And we also know that, of course, diabetes and obesity. But with aging, there's a progressive loss of physiologic integrity leading to impaired function. And this process is modulated by all sorts of different factors, but we know that nutritional habits influence the aging process. And so this is why it's so important to test your hemoglobin A1C levels to make sure that your glucose levels are not having a lot of ebbs and flows, more of a stable, even lowest, lowest level. And there's evidence that these dietary patterns influence the level of glycation. And that's where we're going to go and talk about these different uh, studies today. So the role of refined grains, glycosylation, and silation. So we've talked a lot about how sugar can attach to proteins, but there's this other molecule called silaic acid. I don't expect you to remember this, but I just need you to know that essentially we want lower levels of glycation and fructosylation and higher levels of silation. If you want to type in YouTube, there's a bunch of videos from scientists from Europe and stuff that talk about silation and the signatures of silation. But studies have shown that individuals that consume processed foods okay, uh, actually have higher levels of glycation and impaired silation, which is linked with accelerated cellular aging. That's a big take home here because I know you're not going to like Google or ask your doctor for a silation test. They're not going to come up with it. But research studies show that that consumption of these foods impair these so-called glycome, which is the whole signature of all these different glycation molecules and silation molecules that are linked with cellular dysfunction. So this is the most important argument to not eat processed food because people will say, well, look, as long as you're in a calorie deficit or you're, you're, you're balancing your macros, you can have the Kit Kat bar or the Twix or the, the donuts or go to get, get a bunch of processed food. But we know that from this particular study that processed food consumption impairs the whole glycation signature process that leads to cellular dysfunction. That's the take home here. It's not just about the energy. It's the composition of the macros that you're consuming impact these post-translational modifications on your proteins that can compromise cellular function. I know that sounds like a lot of big jargonistic words, but it's important to recognize it's not just about the genes. It's what you're feeding your body because that impacts the physiology of these different things. And so the title of this paper that was published in 2021, titled Diet Affects Glycosylation of Serum Proteins in Women at Risk for Cardiometabolic Disease. They say the results of this study suggest that dietary patterns can affect post-translational modifications, specifically the N-glycosylation. The current study is the first to show this relationship in humans. Given the association between diet and glycation composition of proteins, we report here it is important to investigate if serum glycoproteome, the F the serum glycoproteome, can be used to identify biomarkers of dietary patterns. And they say specifically, silation is specifically noted for its effects on protein half-life, clearance, and functionality of proteins, whereas the loss of silaic acid is associated with reduced half-life and functionality. Aging is generally associated with more pro-inflammatory glycans that are less silated. So that's the important point here is eat whole real foods, minimize consumption of these processed foods in your diet because they impact your whole glycoproteome and they can compromise the function of your body. Now, this study found that low calorie diets alter glycation. So this is where fasting, Ramadan fasting, compressing feeding windows, going on a low calorie diet periodically and so forth can actually improve the glycation and silation process in the body. And so they actually looked at 1500 IgG antibody uh, epitopes and found significant changes, not necessarily with diet type, whether low carb or vegan or high protein and so forth, but with calorie content. 
And so uh, over-consuming energy, uh, and especially if that energy is coming from carbohydrates, can impact your level of glycation and silation in the body and therefore impact the function of your proteins. This is something we learn in high school biology. Structure equals function. So you know that your proteins are part of your enzymes, part of your structural components of, you know, like collagen and type 2 collagen. All these proteins are very important. Well, if they're glycated and fructosylated and there's a dearth of silation, these proteins become compromised and therefore the structure becomes compromised and thus the function becomes compromised. Really important to recognize. So they found that a low calorie diet had a favorable impact on the overall glycation signatures of these IgG antibodies. And again, I think this is the connection between metabolic disease and immune dysfunction and the correlations with obesity and asthma, for example, obesity, diabetes, and severe COVID-19, uh, reduction of a, a vaccine-induced antibody response in people who are overweight or have visceral adipose issue. Like all these things have been talked about, but scientists weren't really sure exactly what is the chicken or the egg and how is this working? Well, if you're having a lot of glycemic variability and your immune cells are compromised, the function of them are compromised because of this glycemic variability and impaired glycation, then how can you expect the body to mount an effective immune response when exposed to a pathogen, whether it's RSV or influenza or AIDS or COVID? And so this is really important because the scientists have talked a lot about this. And essentially what they found is there was an alteration in this glycome, that is the the total collection of these glycation signatures was observed over the course of eight weeks in subjects that went on a low calorie diet and lost weight. And what they found was there was a significant predictable shift in the signatures of glycation and silation. And what's important about this is this is linked with lower chronic inflammation. That's something we can't talk about enough because chronic inflammation is part and parcel with metabolic dysfunction and weight gain and aging. And so if you can reduce your levels of chronic inflammation, then you're going to live a disease-free life longer and going to extend your health span. And so it turns out that fasting uh, decreases this inflammation. And this was a study in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. They found that their IgG glycome, so their immunoglobulin antibodies, the signature of the glycation on those antibodies significantly changed after a seven to 10 day fast, where there were no significant changes after a vegetarian diet. And this, these changes in the IgG glycation was linked with less severity of rheumatic disease. And so uh, this is the, the connection, again, between metabolism and immunity, so-called meta-inflammation, this connection that, that's impossible to disentangle. So that's just one reason to avoid processed food. You're increasing your consumption. You're increasing your risk, rather, of developing these inflammatory diseases. Uh, we know that cardiovascular disease is inherently inflammatory. Dementia, even depression, has inflammatory origins. So the foods that you eat are very important because they impact the modifications of the proteins in your body. I think it's really, really important. So lots of unanswered questions here. How can we measure this? There's a company called GlycoAge. I have no affiliation with them. You can check them out, maybe work with your doctor. We have the hemoglobin A1C test from our friends at BioCoach. There's different things that you can look at. But the interesting connections here are with the gut microbiome health and how beta-hydroxybutyrate actually can influence the glycation signatures as well. We know that fasting can be helpful. We know that exercise can also be helpful. So there's all these different tools but what's unique here is we're sort of distancing ourselves from this very obtuse argument that a, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. Yes, a calorie is a unit of energy, but that doesn't characterize or tell you the composition of the foods and how those the composition of those foods will impact uh, complex metabolic processes within the body, including levels of glycation. So really important to recognize that the composition of your diet matters. Eating unprocessed whole row of foods can help to minimize the post-translational modifications of your key proteins in your body and can help you age more gracefully. So really important stuff. I'll just leave you with this study here from 2013. Again, I think we're going to hear so much more about this in the next 10 years. The title of this is End Glycomic Biomarkers of Biologic Aging and Longevity, A Link with Inflammaging. So again, what is inflammaging? The age-associated increase in inflammation. You want to avoid this, and that's why it's important to compress your feeding window, to fast more, to exercise more, eat more whole real foods, compress your feeding window, try not to do a bunch of snacking and so forth before bed. Really important stuff here, friends. So um, I'm sure we're going to hear more about this in the years to come. I just wanted to share this with you because I'm working on a new book and this is a, a chapter in the book and I just want to give you a primer 
as to where the science is going when it comes to optimizing aging, supporting health span, and its links with carbohydrate fluctuation and uh, glycemic variability and alterations of your key structural proteins. And so we want to maintain the function of, of your proteins and minimize that glycemic variability. So as always, I appreciate you watching all the way through. Thanks for hitting that like button. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments, and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.